Hey guys, it's Bruce of ComboCourses.com and we are talking about the Information Assurance Cybersecurity Specialist in Aberdeen, Maryland. And let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, let me tell you that I have a ConvoCourses.com. Before we get started, you should know that I have a site where I teach about how to get into cybersecurity, how to get into an entry level position. What do you need to get into an entry level position? I got one about how to get into a remote position and one to get into cybersecurity and make upwards of six figures. And I got one more where we talk about how to do ISO work, my specialty, risk management framework, that kind of stuff from a practical point of view. So if you're interested in that or this job, go into the description below and you'll see how to interact with me more or to find this actual job. Okay. So what are we talking about here? We are talking about a, this is a recruiter that reached out to me and they are offering uh, an opportunity in Maryland, Aberdeen, Maryland. There's lots and lots and lots of cybersecurity and IT jobs there. If you didn't know that whole area, uh, but it's an information assurance, also known as cybersecurity. Uh, so information assurance, if you didn't know, is another name for cybersecurity. Another uh, less used name would be uh, surety. Um, cyber surety is another word for it. And there, there's lots of different descriptions on what these guys do. But it's a full-time position and it's a 110 k a year and it says must have in big bold letters a security clearance so more than likely if you don't have a security clearance they're not going to consider you and then they want you to have a security plus or equivalent and that's required so right off the bat they're telling you this we absolutely have to have this so if you have those two things proceed on if not go to my next video i've got tons of other jobs that i talk about you can contact people for that all right, let's kind of talk about this and kind of break this down so we understand what this employer wants. So their primary duties and responsibilities, what they're expecting you to do in this position is to provide subject matter expertise in provision of information assurance, also known as cybersecurity. More specifically, they're talking about like doc documentation type stuff support for certification and accreditation. Okay, DIACAP or risk management framework accreditation packages artifact generation, requirement analysis, security testing evaluation. Okay, so I can break this one down. This is the stuff that I actually have been doing for many, many years. And when I talked about my course that talks about how to get into, uh, how to do information system security officer work and risk management framework, this is exactly what, what it does. And just in a nutshell, if you've never heard this kind of stuff before, I can explain it. Essentially, organizations have to meet certain federal and federal um, standards. The federal government has these best practices that every system on their, all their internet, all their networks have to meet. And that, just to give you a sampling of what they're talking about, it's like HTTPS has to be implemented on external web pages or um, internally you have to have a certain, externally and internally you have to have a certain encryption level on all of your systems. Then documentation would be like every time you make a change in your environment, whether it's like a server upgrade or going from one operating system to another or something like that, you have to go through a change management process and also you need to have all of your hardware and software documented. Like how many routers do we have? How many computer systems do we have? How many do we follow all of our vulnerability? All that kind of stuff is documentation, policies, procedures, tactics, uh, techniques, wikis. All of those things are processes and procedures. And you, as a, certif a certification and accreditation professional, that's a very old term for a ISO or information system security officer, uh, they kind of, they're really synonymous. It means the same thing. People don't really use the CNA term anymore or DIACAP. They're using a lot of old terminology in this. But what they're talking about is somebody who's like the, basically, they're like the cops or the lawyers of the system that make sure all the documentation matches what's actually going on in the actual environment. And that's done continuously because there's so much documentation and there's so much making sure that the security posture has not changed. And if it does change, which it does on a regular basis, you have to change the documentation. You have to make sure that everything is within compliance with the federal government. And in a nutshell, that's kind of what they're talking about here. Let me read a little bit more here. 
it says, uh, well, let's go up here. They also want you to do system analysis, hardening, incident response policy, and policy analyst analysis, uh, trusted product evaluation, information assurance assessment, uh, security posture, presentation. and pro So what they mean is like once you put all of the security features in place, they're saying we also want you to double check or audit uh, doing an assessment to make sure that these systems are in alignment with the federal standards and the reason why it's so important is because once you get to a federal level you have systems that are sometimes protecting things like personal data of very important people you got uh you know such as soldiers or officers or executives who work in certain or directors who are sitting on the board with the president or uh it could be uh secretary of uh, of USDA or Secretary of State or sec you know the the all of these offices follow these federal standards because the information that they have is very important. It's not just protecting personal information of very important people or critical resources, but it's also doing things like managing large funds for the federal government. It's doing things like um, doing logistics for for uh, maybe embassy. Uh, people in work in the embassy you have to do some logistics and there's a system that takes care of that you know if that ever got compromised you'd know exactly where embassy uh where where your un troops are or whatever things like that so there's just many different things that that these systems do that are very important so they have to take the extra precaution of not only securing the systems and documenting them but also evaluating to make sure that okay are these security controls in place? Do you have two-factor authentication? Do you have auditing? Let me see it. Let me see where you put the auditing in place. Did you back up these systems? Okay, let's see. Yep, you backed up the systems. Like Things like that is what they mean when they say auditing and making sure that the trusted products are evaluated. Let me see. And the trusted products are evaluated means like, let's say your, your agency wants to buy a new firewall. Well, you can't just go to Best Buy and buy a firewall. Right, which I've seen happen before, and put it on an enterprise network, and they're just you need a certain level of product. So product evaluation means okay, we need a top grade, military grade firewall. And so the military, for one example, there's also DHS and all these other organizations. They have a standard. They say no, you can only buy stuff from this list of evaluated products. If you're working in our Department of Homeland Security, you have to pick from these this list of items. Don't go to Best Buy. Don't go to Walmart to get a firewall. Don't go online on Amazon to get a firewall. You have to pick from these this these list of products that are supported by the vendor that have a certain a higher level standard of security on them on these systems. So that's what they're that's what they're saying when they say a product. Uh, trusted product evaluation all right let's keep going here they're saying cna documentation kind of talked about that in compliance with diacap and or a risk management framework uh apply knowledge and technology and analyze analyze the security implications of system and application security provide uh recommendations for decision makers so there so this is this is kind of what you do as an information system security officer and a system security engineer, by the way, information system security engineer. You'll sit in whenever, let's say you're the, the department you're in, or organization you're in decides, okay, we need a new firewall. So they'll pull in all their technical experts who have been doing firewalls for you know 15 years or whatever and have a whole team of people and they have their top person go there. And then you'll have, uh, you'll have the managers who have the purse strings. These are guys who who control all the money and they're responsible for the system so they have to do the best thing but a smart leader listens to their people and they bring the smartest people in the room they're relying on their smartest people their subject matter experts to come in and tell them so they can make the best decision That's right so you're they're relying on you this job is relying on you to come in and be the expert on what are the federal governments saying about this? So when you guys are sitting in a meeting, you got your high level technical guys, you got your decision maker and your managers there, and then they have you in there. And your technical guys are like, hey, we want to buy this firewall from Best Buy. It's the best firewall out there. Your your job is to speak up and say, no, we can't get this 
I mean, obviously, I'm using a very dumb sample here, but your your job is to say, no, here's the list of documented firewalls that we can use. Here it is right here. And we this is, as you can see, there's no Best Buy firewall on this list. There's nothing from Amazon on this list. We have to buy from this list. And they're like, well, that, that firewall costs uh, $200,000. With the with the support contract, that's this is the list that the government gave to us, and this is what we have to go buy. So that's you, that's when you'll step in. Now, the decision maker can go buy that Best Buy firewall; they can do whatever they want. But you, uh, you probably need to take them aside and tell them, "Listen, you know your job's on the line. This these firewalls, this is going to be one of the the." most important parts of your defense like you can't just go get this round and just kind of give you an idea of what you do as a cybersecurity person and what this job is asking you to do what level of expertise what kinds of things will be asked of you that's what I'm trying to get you to think about all right so requirements they're saying you need to have an, at least an associate's degree with seven years of experience or a bachelor's degree with five or a master's degree with three years of experience or a combination of nine years of experience included with your education or certification. So it's almost 10 years of experience if you don't have, uh, may be included with specialized training and certification. So you can have not have a, a degree. I've seen this happen before where somebody just has a bunch of experience in one thing and uh, they're specialized and they have these certifications or whatever. But you don't necessarily have a the degree that they want uh, or a degree at all. Uh, ex they want experience with network vulnerabilities with re using Retina, ACAS, and Nessus. And then they want uh, patch management software. They want you to have experience with patch management software such as WSUS, SCCM, and others, and Hercules. Um, so that's it. I'm going to put all the contact information in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. And um, also, if you're interested in actually knowing more, if you want to hear my dumb face talking more about how to get into cybersecurity. Go ahead and check it out. There's a link below and I'll see you guys on the next one.